Well, any results? Yes. Well, thanks to the boy here. As it turns out, he has quite the knack for languages. <laughs> Only because I've got the best teacher. Careful, honey tongue. You'll give this old girl ideas. Huh? Now, child, I'm sure they're curious about the song we unearthed. Why don't you read it aloud? Yes, teacher. Song? Eight-headed is the lord of the land, with seven mouths to devour malevolence. Through pulses of earth doth base nature's flow, as he awaits the time of awakening. Four Empyreans may tear him asunder, but so long as there is one receptive to divine power, Therians shall be forever reborn in sight of the full crimson moon. The nameless Empyrean hath one heart. The nameless Empyrean hath one body. Wow, this is and a nice picture. Essentially, this ancient text you found is an annotated volume of drawings and songs pertaining to Enominot. Annotated? Then hurry up and just tell us what it means. I'm sorry. So far we've only figured out how to read the song lyrics. All right. I take it we're still in for a good long wait before it's thoroughly decrypted. Likely so, but if we want to find out what the Abbey is up to, we need to know what's in this book, no matter how long it takes. Hmm. What the Abbey's up to, is it? I think we can learn much, even from the lyrics alone. The drawings depict him with eight heads. One of them belongs to his main body. But the other seven are his mouths. Those mouths consume malevolence, sending it along earth pulses back to that main body so he can awaken. The seven monsters fitting that description are called... Therians. Right. Now as for this malevolence, I have no idea what that means. Hmm... What about the second part? I haven't studied much ancient history, but it said this world was created by four Empyreans, Earth, Water, Wind, and Fire. But they also call Enominot an Empyrean. Perhaps a war broke out between Enominot and the other Empyreans that resulted in him being sealed away. But if there is someone to connect with this divine power, the Therians will keep spawning. And just like that, Enominot will be revived. If we assume that Shepard Artorius fits that bill, and that he's trying to reawaken Enominot, everything lines up. Which means our job is to find these Therians and cut off Enominot's heads, so to speak. But where do we even start looking for them? Remember, the song states that the Therians and Enominot's body are connected through Earth pulses. If their job is to feed Enominot, the most effective place to position them would be at the Earth Pulse points. Points? The place is where the power of Earth Pulses is concentrated. Places with that sigil. Hey, remember the barrier that was keeping this bug in the forest? Wait, are you trying to say that thing's Aetherian? And yet... It would explain why the Abbey was keeping it locked up. And there was that same barrier at the villa, too. The bug? That's right. Do you suppose that was also a Therian? Does that mean the Therians all come in different forms? Should we go to Logress and check? We've just started deciphering the book. I'd hate to lose time on some fool's errand. I'd rather know at least a little more about what's in it before we make a move. Hmm. Something bothering you, Grim? This line. The one about Therians being forever reborn. 
Whoa. Uh, I just felt the same thing as I did in Warg Forest. The needle's pointing in the direction of Amenoch's temple, Palamedes. Do I recall hearing that the Abbey took that over? Temples and ritual sites are often built on places thought to be rich in spiritual energy. Could the temple possibly be an Earth Pulse point? There's lots of Earth Pulse points scattered all over the world. If there's only seven Therians, most of them will be empty. It's not like we have any better leads. If there's even a chance, shouldn't we go check it out? Better than sitting around waiting on the book. If nothing else, we'll find out what Lafayette said is sensing. Hmm, just a theory, but if you were to kill a Therian... What? Hmm, I guess there's only one way to find out. Never mind. Good luck out there. Who are you? The innkeeper's daughter. I just... I happened to overhear you all talking about going to Palamedes and... Did you report us to the Abbey? Report? But you already have an exorcist with you. If you have any business, talk with her then. I... I'm Eleanor Hume, an exorcist with the Abbey. How might I be of service? I want you to look for someone. A mother and her child went to visit the Abbey grounds, but they haven't returned. They've both gone missing? Yes. The mother's name is Mahina. She's a priestess of Amenoch. And her little daughter's name is Kamoana. Hold on. If she's a priestess of Amenoch... Right. Ever since the Abbey booted her out from the temple, she's been regularly going back to make her objections heard. But one day, she never returned home. And now her daughter has disappeared too. I can only assume that she went to go look for her mother. And you believe they're being held at the temple? Oh no, ma'am. I just... I just can't imagine Mahina would abandon her daughter like that. Kamuana is next in line to succeed her, so she's had a strict upbringing, but her mother truly loves her. Please forgive Mahina for her protests. I was just hoping you could use the Abbey's resources to track them down. I will do everything in my power to find them. <sighs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Like Kamoana, I grew up with only my mother as family. I can't help but worry for them. Of course. Let's be off, Miss Exorcist. Eleanor, what's your game here? The mother and daughter, you mean? That's on me. I'll search for them myself. I don't care about that. Well, what then? Why are you actively helping us decipher the book when we're using it to thwart the Abbey's plans? You think I might be deliberately misleading you? Laying a trap of some sort for you all? Are you? I think you're a lot of things, demon. But foolish is not one of them. I want to know the truth. I want to know what Lord Artorius is trying to accomplish. 
And there's something happening in the world right now. I want to know what it is. Unfortunately, little old Eleanor has never been deemed trustworthy enough to be given such information. So, my only option is to find out for myself. You've got the soul searching down at least. The Abbey and your band of rogues follow two different paths. But something tells me either will lead me to the same destination. And so you don't see any need to lie to us? Exactly. And what'll you do if those truths don't line up cleanly with what you believe? I'm... not sure yet. As honest an answer as any. Either way, it looks like you'll be working with us for the near future. Yes, for now. Hey, could I ask you something? What is it? About the Therians. I've heard you call yourself a Therian before. Is there any particular insight you have about them? No, none. Artorius said I was one, that's all. And that doesn't bother you? Does it bother you? Nope, not at all. If you're not worried, then neither am I. I'm surrounded by freaks. But, was that truly the reason Ceres chose me? Velvet keeps picking on Madame Eleanor! They're total opposites, so I know they're just gonna clash sometimes, but Velvet takes it too far! You really think they're totally opposite? If Madame Eleanor is a white lily, then Velvet is a black rose. If Madame Eleanor is a soaring pegasus, then Velvet is a wolf in the shadows. If Madame Eleanor is a plate of spaghetti carbonara, Velvet is squid ink noodles with seaweed. I don't follow you completely, but I think I get the point. <laughs> I'm sure you understand. The two have nothing at all in common. And since they don't share anything in common, some fighting now and then just can't be helped. Well... They both have beautiful hair. Okay, but we're talking a noble exorcist and an aloof demon. Eleanor sometimes treats you coldly. And Velvet has helped me more times than I can count. Madam Eleanor gives herself fully to the salvation of others. But Velvet is bent solely on revenge. That means they're both motivated by thoughts of others. How is the cheerful and talkative Madame Eleanor at all the same as the brooding, taciturn Velvet? Both of them talk to me when it's just the two of us together. You're just trying to be contrary. I'm only telling you what I've experienced. <laughs> Actually, I feel that Madame Eleanor isn't really reaching out to me. It's all right if Eleanor doesn't want to talk to you. I'm here for you, Bienfu. You aren't alone. That just makes me feel lonelier. <laughs> you two are opposites yourselves. Huh? Well, that was something. Oh boy. So the hat's it, I to find it. Yeah, why not?
This rocky shore just keeps going. Just don't step on any sea slugs, okay? Why not? What's the big deal? It's just that it isn't pretty. Their insides squish everywhere. Yikes. That sounds pretty traumatizing. Then again, if you pickle their innards, it makes for a great snack. You eat them? Oh, don't be a baby. You've had worse. Forget the sea slugs. Try not to step on the coral. Good point. Coral is alive and needs our protection. Or maybe it's because some of it can be sold for jewelry. I didn't mean either of those reasons. Although Manon appears similar to Maclear Beach, it was formed by a completely different process. Now that you mention it, this area is covered by rocks. Maclear is just your average seashore. But Manon here was made by the slow corrosion of seaside caves. They were worn away by the waves? That too. But mainly, it was the handiwork of a rock-eating species of coral known as ravening table coral. Stay in contact long enough, and they'll melt your flesh right off. <laughs> ah, so that's why it tingles every time I touch the coral. Why didn't you warn us earlier? Wow, all sorts of things popped out. Yep, it's a whimsical wonderland over here. before I go to sleep, since it's nocturnal. How long are you going to keep on calling it a rhino stag roast? 
I don't know. It's a new kind of beetle, so it's gonna be hard to tell if it's really a rhino or a stag. You're asking a lot of questions. Bienfu, do you like bugs? Duh! I love rhinoceros and stag beetles both! What guy doesn't find them fascinating? Right? So which kind of beetle do you think it is? Rhino or stag? Oh, that's a tough question. But guess what? Miss Mogilu taught me a surefire way to tell. I didn't know there was a way to tell. Yeah, but if I do it, you gotta name it after me, all right? Uh... Come on! What guy doesn't wish he had a cool bug named after himself, right? And besides, Miss Mogilu told me that this technique is so good that it's only fair to have a bug named after you in return. So what do you say, man to man? Come on, let's live the dream! Oh, all right. How can I say no to that? Besides, we all did work together to capture it anyway. Yay! Thanks, Laffy Set. All right, show me the bug, and I'll tell you what it is. Miss Mogilu says you need to open up its outer wings and get a good whiff of the thin underwings. Uh, I'm pretty sure I remember rhinoceros and stag beetles smelling really nasty under their wings. Is it really that bad? Why not find out for yourself? Uh, no thanks. I think I'll pass. Maybe you shouldn't do this after all, Bienfu. You probably just want to hog the name all to yourself! Well, too bad! A real man never goes back on his word! If it packs a mean punch, then it's a rhinoceros beetle. And if it smells really zesty, then it's a stag beetle. I don't know about this. Just let him do it, Lafayette. He's already volunteered. I can do this? Just you watch! <laughs> this smell is the most bad, bad thing that ever bad, bad in it! Whoa! He fainted with his eyes still open! Hey! Wake up! Wake up, Bianfu! Miss Mogilu, as soon as I smelled it, my nose... Literally exploded. He looks like he's having a bad dream. <laughs> I spy with my little eyes a kiddo who's spying at my bewitching waist. Oh, sorry. I just couldn't help it. What are those books anyway? Oh, that's a great question. Since you asked, I'll reveal the secrets of my tomes just for you. On the right, I've got my household ledger in the back, and my magic encyclopedia in the front. That one I mostly use for oil blotting paper. What's oil blotting paper? Huh? It's a girl thing. The two on the left are my heavy book, which I use for flower pressings, and then my super pop-up book. A super pop-up book? When you open it, it pops out with the force of a raging river! When an enemy has me cornered, I can just open it up facing a nearby wall and pop! Instant getaway! The only downside is that it's a real pain to try to get closed again, so I haven't used it in years. What about the book right in front? That's actually Lair Cake. Whoa! Uh, what? Really? Seared into its batter are precious bits of knowledge. Eating it is just as good for your brain as it is for your stomach. Wow! I had no idea that was possible! He's taking this so seriously, I almost feel bad. All of your books are so interesting, Moggy Lou! That's really cool! There's no end to your curiosity, is there? What do you say? Wanna take a closer look? Boy, would I! If you really do, then say, Moggy Lou, I want to get to know you better! No, Moggy don't, Lou, don't say it. I wanna get to know you better! All right, I accept. I'll reveal to you my most private secrets. Wow, so that's what's on the other side of these books. Oh, I would never guess that. What the? What are you doing with Lobby Set? Michael, you want to? He wanted to see me, so I'm showing him. You have no right to stand in the way of his desires. It's my job to protect him as his vessel, especially from someone so wicked as yourself. Also, 
What you're doing runs contrary to public decency. Witches aren't supposed to be decent. These bindings with the locks on them. This style used to be really popular during the Meliodas dynasty. Now that I know you're such a bad influence for him, I'll be keeping a closer eye on you. If you can't learn to take it easy, nobody's ever gonna want to marry you, you know. Like you're a shining example of marriage material yourself. Hey, Mogilu, could you turn them over one more time? I want to see how the books attach to your belt. Yeah, sure. <sighs> hey, Mogilu. Hey. They make an entire skit about this. Oh, she's gonna end my channel, isn't she? Actually, now that I look at the book skull, thought, what is this? Why the one in the front is reversed? Like, Actually, shouldn't all be with the yellow thing up? Oh boy. Now I wish I bought some costume just to put her to sleep. 